What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, back at you with another Omnibus Haul. Stay tuned. All right, guys, got a nice little haul going on today. A few Omnibus Deluxe Edition trades. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. First up, we got Gideon Falls Trade Paperback Volume 3. Super stoked. I'm probably going to go ahead and read this as soon as I get done recording it. I'm all caught up reading the trades. And this volume contains issues 12 through 16. Had a $16.99 cover price. I'm interested to see where it goes. What's going on with that black barn with the black door and all these things. So let's take a look at some of the pages. Hopefully I don't spoil myself. All right, here's the cover for Gideon Falls. You got this whole clock theme going on here. It's called Stations of the Cross. Here's the spine. Really enjoy this book. What is this, Jeff Lemire? It doesn't really feel like his Valiant stuff. This feels more like what he wants to write. You know what I mean? It kind of is. It must be his own original story that he's really into. It's creepy as hell. The paneling on the pages is interesting. Even how they do this stunk with the letters. They do a lot of symmetrical panels and like panels that make artwork and fall off the page and such. So. It's a really interesting, fun read, man. I, I really I really like it. To me, it's not boring at all. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this tonight. Here's the back. Did I show it? Spider-Man Life Story. This is the six-issue miniseries that kind of goes through each era of Spider-Man. This is the trade paperback. Uh, I almost went ahead and picked up all of these single issues uh, at my comic shop, but they were missing like one, and I didn't want to go back and forth between shops. So, uh, luckily this was coming out soon and I picked it up. This is pro three of these books I'm going to bring downstairs and uh, put on my nightstand to knock them all out as soon as possible. This is one of them. $24.99 cover price. Let's flip through a little bit and see what the artwork looks like in Spider-Man Life Story. Spider-Man Life Story, I believe this is the cover from issue one. Here is your spine. And the back. So I don't know the overarching story here or what's going on. I flipped through the artwork and I saw, you know, he was in red and blue for a couple of uh, issues. He was with the symbiote for an issue. Looks like Mary Jane in the club. There he goes. Oh, you got some vision action here. Old Doc Ock. So yeah, I mean, I heard it was good. As a Spider-Man guy, I heard it was, you know, recommended, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it. Next up, this is kind of an older book. Uh, this is the Baltimore Omnibus. So when it came out on in-stock trades, it was the only thing that came out that week, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to save it for another haul. I don't want to have to just put random stuff on the um, order to go over $50 for free shipping. Nothing came out the week after, and then this went out of stock. So uh, I ended up picking it up on Amazon. They sent the copy, had a crazy big ding right here. Even though it was mailed in a nice, like, hard cardboard sh uh, shipper. Almost like a Gemini shipper, but for bigger books. So they sent this replacement. It does have wear and dings on it. It was uh, shipped in a bubble mailer. But, you know what, whatever. Uh, Baltimore is part of the Mignola universe. It is out of the pages of Hellboy. Uh, never heard of Baltimore, but... I'm going to add it to my BPRD Deluxe Edition collection, which I have read everything except for Abe Sapien, and I will read Baltimore. There's another one coming out, too, that I've read in my solicits for November. Not Baltimore, but um, another Mignola, uh, Mignola verse book. This has a cover price of $34.99. It's volumes, I'm sure, one through three of Baltimore. Let's flip through. It's going to be Mignola goodness. So let's take a look. And here goes Baltimore. Very Mike Mignola, uh, Mignola, you can see on the cover here. Got a little demon, got a weird guy. You can see the damage from uh, from Amazon on the top corner, bottom corner. Here's the spine, same as all the BPRD, Abe Sapien Deluxe Edition, so it'll go good with those. And just like those, the regular hardcover is just this black type of canvas book. Like a black shiny lettering in the spine. I did stretch that spine a little bit. The Plague Ships is chapter one. It's 
So typical artwork like you would expect from a Mignola verse book. That's pretty creepy. It actually looks a, like a lot more modernized though. This must have been later on when he did this run. I like these like demon looking creatures with the red eyes. Yeah, he might you know what he might not have drew this though. Christopher Golden. He must have drew, drew us the covers or something. This artwork is not him for sure. Well, interesting enough. That's Mignola. All right, next up we got Berserk Deluxe Edition Volume 3. These are always super fun, fast reads. This is the third book I'm going to bring down with me after I record this. Me and Fee will probably read this in one sitting together like i'll knock it out hand it to her she'll knock it out and we'll probably do a review on this um i'm a little nervous because so far the first two volumes had some sick twisted shit and i hear it gets crazier maybe not so much in this volume but uh, uh, coming soon but so far i've enjoyed berserk they've been fun reads and i'm happy to dig into this i think it was a 49.99 cover price and it should be volumes what seven through nine of berserk let's flip through yep we got the berserk volume three finally in the building you know what made me interested about berserk is you know being a statue collector and seeing prime one come out with those one-third scale statues and that made me interested enough in it and uh and reading it i can see why there was a big enough following to make humongous expensive statues because it seems like a an interesting enough story so far a lot of great, uh, cool mythos and again, I mean, it's sick and twisted. It's mature readers for sure. And uh, like I mentioned, I hear it only gets crazier. So we'll take a read at this. It's going to be a quick read. A nice little love scene there. And uh, we'll do a review. Ooh. Next up, we got Timely's Greatest, Simon and Kirby. This is Captain America, Golden Age Marvel stuff. And you know what? I'm a little disappointed with these books, to be honest with you, because you know I come to find out that really, what it collects is uh, already collected. You know, most of it's already collected in the Marvel Comics Golden Age Omnibus, and then this, the Human Torch and the Namor, have all the same issues, just their little sections out of the comics. It just kind of feels like, like who asked for these books? You know, I mean, it's nice to have books an omnibus format that you would never be able to pick up the single issues and that is what kind of intrigued me to the omnibus format to begin with but i just feel like there was so much better stuff they could have could have printed you know and you know i, I bought this purely for the collection i'll probably never read it they are expensive they're 150 dollars, but you know we get them for 50 percent off through in stock trades but uh, i mean they look nice and everything but uh, again nobody really asked for these books so whatever let's flip through all right, so I went with the direct market variant over the more modernized variant because I like for these covers to match the content inside. You know, the book the book itself looks good. I'm just not going to be in any hurry to read this if, if I ever get around to it, you know. But Timely is obviously uh, the company, uh, the name of the company before it came Marvel when they produced uh, Silver Surfer comics, Human Torch comics, which was the Android John Hammond Human Torch submariner stuff so cool wraparound cover golden age art i'm all about old school stuff too like you guys see the posters in my room are all silver age and you know i like the idea that this was reprinted like this for the first time some stuff and and, and this oversized omnibus edition but you know i gotta think how many collectors out there you know how, how big is the market for that you know who want to read, you know, Golden Age stuff like this. But it's cool to have. It's history on the shelf. Let's just hope they start reprinting some, some modern stuff. <laughs> Last up from DC, we have the big boy, the uh, Zero Hour Crisis in Time Omnibus. Uh, I'm not really familiar with this run. I know that this is 90s DC, it's after Crisis on Infinite Earths, it's after Death of Superman, it's after Green Lantern becomes Parallax. And to my understanding where Crisis on Infinite Earths was to correct the kind of multiverse and the different versions of characters throughout runs over the years, 
this was a crisis that kind of corrected different characters from different eras and different times. So I guess that's the premise here. Uh, I wasn't into DC at this time. I was reading Spider-Man and X-Men. So this one kind of uh, wasn't on my radar. But, you know, I pick up pretty much every omnibus unless it's a total cash grab. This is going to be one that uh, I would be interested to read. I love this type of artwork. 90s stuff is my ish. And it's not extreme 90s. It's like nice copper age art. Uh, speaking of which, we'll jump into it. It does have a $150 cover price and collects a ton of different issues over multiple titles. I'm not even going to read them all because it'll take forever. But let's flip through it and take a look at Zero Hour. And last up, this is the uh, dust jacket for the Zero Hour Crisis in Time. I love the artwork on it. I'm a big fan of this style of art. Nice big spine. When DC does an omnibus, they <laughs> do an omnibus. You don't really see thin omnibus from them that often. Here's the back. Nice, nice amount of colors here. The spine as well. You got the inside flap. This is zero hour. You can see they got a wraparound cover here. It's over. Your time is over. All time is over. Yeah, so this is like a time-based story. Wraparound cover is cool. I'm not familiar with that villain, but you can see how you have like Barry Allen. Was that Jay Garrick? And you have the different characters, like different versions of them throughout time. And these these crisis events seem to have always been a cleanup effort from DC. Okay, let's everything got too scattered. Let's let's reel it back in. I like how they have Steel, because you know I only really read him in the Return of Superman or Reign of the Superman, and then I never really read much of him after that. So it's cool to see that he was in this book. Same with that Superboy, although I think he was a lot more prominent moving forward. And he has Superboy Prime and all that stuff. Got some old school Lobo. I like how they have the uh, the covers, man. I really appreciate that. I like to see what issue I'm reading, so I like that a lot, actually. They don't do that in the modern uh, omnibus. Dope artwork. I like this artwork, no dialogue. Again, the covers here. So that's really good to have. Nice covers in the back here. Zero hour crisis in time. Nice covers. Scripts in the back and sketches. Okay, cool. All right, Geminites, that's it for the haul today. Let me know what you think about the books here. Uh, which ones are you guys looking forward to seeing reviews for? Did you pick any of these up? Uh, make sure to hit that like button before you leave. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content. And stay minty fresh. Peace.